Good evening. This is Splash 105.5 FM, your integrity station. And I welcome you to Inside. I'm Ulua Shim, Mark Nola. Good evening. On the program today, we have uh, to look at something very important. It's been in the public domain, particularly when political issues are being discussed in Nigeria. A lot of people are saying that the APC and PDP political parties have disappointed Nigerians. And so there's a movement to an alternative to these two parties. So today we are looking at the reality and the imperative of the third force in our political trajectory as a nation. Officially, presidential campaigns will commence on 28 September 2022. That's about six months to the presidential poll. There will be many twists and turns with attendant undulation of political fortunes. On this long journey, we're currently in a three-month hiatus, a pre-campaign period. And within that period, a lot of issues will determine where the tide will turn. All right, Peter Obi is a figure to be reckoned with in this discussion. He left the PDP to join the Labour Party to realize his vision for Nigeria. What is social democracy because anyone who looks at the Labour Party will know that this is the first time the Labour Party is being part of our democratic experiment. In fact, amongst the political parties that were proscribed by Agui Ronsi, the Labour movement was part of that, those parties that were proscribed at that time. And in Ondo State some time ago, Olusha Gumemiko had run that state on the platform of Labour Party. The ideology of the Labour Party and its members has been social democracy. They promote and defend social democratic principles and ideals for the purpose of achieving social justice, progress, and people's democracy as well as unity in the nation. To be elected the president of Nigeria, a candidate needs to score not only the highest number of votes, but must also secure 25% of the total valid votes in 24 states and the federal capital territory. Can Peter Obi achieve this feat? Deji Yusufu is with me. He's an author, uh, a social commentator, and I welcome him to the program. Welcome to the program, Deji Yusufu. Thank you very much, Mr. Shaw, for having me. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. It's good to have you, actually. What is attractive about Peter Obi? Well, um, to even begin by answering that question, sir, I want to thank you and other um, broadcasting stations for giving voice to this thing we call the third force. Because the truth of the matter is that if we don't have you as some kind of um, support or even ally, you know, uh, there's no way we'll be able to do the, uh, what we are pursuing. So what exactly is uh, attractive about Peter Obi? I think the short answer to it is what you have just said in your introduction, and that is that people are tired of the APC and of the PDP. The PDP had ruled this country from 1999 till 2015 when um, President Buhari took over on the platform of the APC. And the APC have come into power and they have effectively told us that they are no different from the PDP. So people are looking to Peter Obi because, you know, they are just tired of these two um, prominent and major political parties in the country. He's causing the mass movement. This mass movement, uh, do you believe in this movement? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, incidentally, I am not a card-carrying member of uh, the LP, but I just, like you have said, really believe in it. You know, uh, some of us are at a point in our lives. Number one, we are middle age, we are uh, middle class, and um, we are getting to the point where we are realizing that we must be able to pass on a stable country to our generation, I mean, to our children. Mm. If not, our children are going to end up in Australia or in Germany or in Austria somewhere. In fact, it was because of this thing that I named my own children Yoruba names. They don't have no English names mm. because I know 
that the way we're going in this country, my children will probably not live here. Mm. You know, so their first name and their son names are thick Yoruba, and we don't give our children tribal marks anymore, mm. but we have to give them. So, An identity. Yes, that's the, uh, we have to give them some identity. So, you know, we don't know where we're going through in this country. And so we, this movement is just a reaction. It's a reaction to, uh, um, 23 years, where to my next year is going to be 24, 24 year of bad governance in this country. It's a reaction. That's what it is. But, but the political parties in Nigeria are beyond just APC and PDP. Yes, sir. But it seems that APC and PDP had formed a hegemony, a hegemonic control on, on the polity. Yes. So how easy will there be for a third force to break that hold. Okay, well, to be fair to APC and PDP, um, the word hegemony might not be very good to describe them because they have actually been the power, I mean, the parties that have ruled the country. Mm. And because they have ruled the country, they naturally would have those structures on ground. The PDP has it, the APC now have it, you know. But the, um, the LP have to now, I mean, sorry, not just the LP, but every other uh, party would have to now break this hold, this hegemonical hold that they have over there. They have to do something about it. You know, I mean, we have to. <laughs> I'm so sorry uh, that, you know, I'm very passionate about this matter because, I mean, if something doesn't give, I don't know what's going to happen. Now, what gives me some hope, what gives me a lot of hope at this moment is what happened in 2020 with the end in SARS. SARS movement. That is what gave me hope. And incidentally, I only gave in to this whole OB movement, Peter OB movement, some two, three, four days ago, when I was able to link the answers with the Peter OB thing. Peter OB has not come out to say anything answers, mm. but I realized that many of the brains, many of the people behind the answers are people who are also championing the Peter OB thing. Now, the answers movement came, it caught fire. It went through the whole country and if it was able to have that effect without even uh what they call it a political uh vision you know and today they're, they're now saying okay now we have somebody we want to put forward mm. as a political figure as a leader because in those days one of the things that they had against the NSAS movement was that they, they didn't have a leader now that they i mean they're looking up to Somebody like Peter will be asked that. When I saw the connection, I keyed into it. And that is where I began to see that there is a possibility. There could be a possibility mm. of an overturning of these two major political passages. So a few days back, yes, sir. you said, I have made up my mind for Peter Obi. Yes. Even if he loses, I will beat my chest and say, I voted against the locusts and caterpillars. Yes. I will also take pride in voting on Igbo for due process and justice. Are you playing ethnic politics? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, um, thankfully, I'm not even Igbo. You know, I'm a Yoruba. <laughs> Both parents, no link with the Igbos. Um, if we look at it from the ethnic dimension, I think there is a sense in it that it is time that at the least, at the least, people from the Eastern region are given a chance possibly to rule this country. Peter Obi has also endeared himself to people like us who believe in fairness, you know, to say, okay, since the Eastern people are clamoring or have been saying they have been marginalized for a long time and you have a Peter will be coming forward uh, and he's from the East. Why not? Why don't we consi consider him? So that's the reason. That's another reason why, you know, the Peter will be uh, candidacy is very appealing, at least to me. What actually got my attention with you was what you wrote again on Facebook. You mm. said, we have tried Umbrella. We have tried broom. Mm. It's time to try human being. Yes. What do you mean? <laughs> ah, yes. That was actually some kind of uh, I, I would like call it sarcastic. Uh, mm. You know, the the umbrella is the 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 the, the symbol for, the, for PDP. the PDP. The broom is the symbol for the APC. On the LP, the logo, you have people there. You have a man, a woman, and I think a young person. Mm. You know, so I mean, it, one just consider that and say, ah, <laughs> when you have considered I me mean, used objects, mm. why don't you use real people and see what will come out of it. I should also say that that quote was not originally mine. Mm. I got it from somebody. I think I got it from a Peter OB. Uh, uh, yes, mm. yes, yes. Okay, so <laughs> let's look at 
the ideology of a labor movement. Now, you, you talked about the NSAR's link with the Peter Obi movement. Yes. That is the people standing up mm -hmm. to take up their country. Yes. That's a revolution of the youth. Yes. More like a, a, a movement by the young people yes. to demand for their rights. Yes. Do you think the young people are actually ready for this movement? Uh, I saw <laughs> I saw a picture and, and a video from the recently conducted executive election yes. where young ladies were showing us what's of mm. Naira notes. Mm, that's they collected, mm. you know, to vote yes. in, in that election. Yes. The Liberal Party did also have a good showing at the KT election. So, do you think the young people are indeed ready for this kind of movement? Well, uh, Sean, uh, let me say by God's grace that we, some of us know, because I also follow re religion, I'm, mm. I'm into the pastoral ministry, some of us have realized that when God is going to be merciful to a country, He usually doesn't use many people. He, use, he uses few people. That's number one. The second thing that I've come to realize is that uh, this country has operated on old thoughts, old ideologies for too long. Mm. Our young people, not all of them, but few of them are doing great things. First of all, let's even look at the answers thing. You know, the, 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 the way the whole idea was birthed, the, the, the organization, the way resources came in to be able to push it, it was clearly uh, ingenious. That's the way I'll, I'll see it. That's one. Number two, we also realized that there are in the, uh, in the entertainment industry. I don't know if you have been checking out some TikTok videos recently. All over the world, and I'm not saying just in Nigeria or Africa alone, but all over the world, People are using Nigerian music for TikTok videos. If you want to make a TikTok video that will go far and a lot of people will listen to or watch, you have to either use this one, the song that was done by the Buga song that was done by Kiss Daniel, or you use this other song that uh, recently, uh, I mean, even the a, a police department in the United States used as an advert, you know. Our young people are creating something from nothing. And it is because this generation of young people were born into nothing. They were born into adversity. They were born into some kind of poverty. And they, they said necessity. Uh, the but it, yeah, it's the mother of invention. These people don't have anything. They finish from the university. They have all the time. They don't have anything to do. All they, I mean, out of desperation. They have to do something. There's a young man that I've been discipling, you know, he was in the university. I was, you know, um, mentoring him. You know, when he finished NYSE, there was nowhere to put him. Today, the young man is in a motherless baby's home. He's a manager there. He's taking care of the children. He's teaching them things. He, I mean, you know, so our young people are finding themselves in nothing, but they're having to create something. This is in comparison to our parents who were born into wealth, they were finishing university and there were plethora of jobs, you know. So that is what is happening. It is these young people, not all of them, few, a few of them that are going to now spearhead a new Nigeria. And it is happening, you know. We go to countries all over the world, countries that have leaders who are working, countries that have leaders who are doing something, are countries that are led by young people, not men who are almost retiring into um care home caregiving yeah. homes you know so we need we need those young people and i'm very thankful that it is happening at least i'm witnessing it Ooh. in my time and you're really optimistic about this well well the, the the thing is that for me personally at least at this time at this time which is about nine months to the election mm. when you measure the political temperature the Labour Party has not reached the point where if there's going to be election today or next month, they are not going to win. Mm. You know, between now and next year, something must happen that will cause a move. You know, a movement mm. is something that tends to just draw people and draw people. If all of our young people are able to get their PVCs and get make sure their vote can because now we realize votes are counting mm. with this whole effort to buy votes in Ikiti State we are realizing votes are counting if they get their PVCs and they vote they vote for uh, somebody like Peter Obi 
They vote for something new. They vote for new ideas. You know, we're going to take this thing from this people. I'll come back to Peter Obi and, and the personality of Peter Obi as a spearhead in this movement. But for you, what is fundamentally wrong with the Nigerian political system? Oh, okay. Well, there are so many things. Ah, so many. We we'll probably will start with leadership. We have leaders who are, they are laid back. We have leaders who are uh, used to the old orders. We have leaders who don't have ideas. They don't have ideas. They don't have, for example, when yeah, Yamil Sivaji, and that's how he won my, my support until he lost at the distance. When he was going to uh, declare his uh, intention to run, he just produced an Instagram video. That was all. It just video. He didn't rent a hall. He didn't have to spend money on video. It was just a little video and it went everywhere and everybody saw it. And the message was clear. You know, our older people don't have, they don't, they are not thinking that way. You know, so that's one of the things we have problems leadership. with leadership. We have problems with this whole idea of uh, a man is the richest person that should take hold of our situation. We have a money money culture money money politics money culture money in fact even in the home it is the wife that is any more that decides what happens to the children everything is being done by money 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 but you don't realize that there is a lot more than money in our in our society there's a lot more than money in the world money is only a tool it must not rule a society how would we lose that direction that is how we, I mean, we've got in there. That's why, you know, if the whole election is going to get down to the point where um, you come to the polling booth and people are offering you 10,000 Naira to vote. Mr. Shion, if I carry 20 young people to the polling vote with PBC and somebody's around the corner giving them 10,000 Naira, I'm sorry, I also know in my heart that at least I'll lose at the least 10 of those 20 people to that kind of, because I mean, there's hunger. You know, but our people must come to realize that there is a lot more than money. There is ideas. For example, this whole thing that forms the very structure of, I mean, the background of the Labour Party and even the background of our modern social system. That is uh, the ideas that were brought forth by Karl Marx, okay, for socialism and ultimately went on to become communism in some other countries. Do we realize that Karl Marx himself was the man who was writing all of his ideas in abject poverty? It was his friends that were sponsoring him. They were paying his salary. They were giving him. The man died with nothing. He died with nothing. So we now take such an idea and then we will now want to use it to cow society and then begin to use it for us no the people who bat these ideas bat it so that others may be served so that others may i mean be sad and then you eventually you have a society where you have most people in the middle class and then when you have most people in the middle class then there's a tendency for crime and all those things will be reduced because when most people are well taken care of they don't have any need to have to take up a gun against another person to steal their property you know but when you have a lot more people in the in the um, poverty line then even the people who think themselves to be wealthy and well to do will not feel safe that's the reason why many of them yes they are living in this country but their children are not here they're sending them abroad the country is not safe anymore you know so <laughs> you know, something has to give in this situation that we are in and what will give well uh again um this is where some of us who are religious are really trusting god um there was a day I was in the university, that is 1998, June, and uh, I can't remember where I was. Okay, I think I was going to church and uh, we had the news. Sani Abacha had died. Mm. He died suddenly. And everybody appreciated that news because he seemed to have held everybody in the jugula. Mm. Now, those of us who were living in the north, because I schooled in the north, probably they would appreciate it more. It was those in the south that appreciated the birth of that man the most. I say that to say this, that one, something is going to happen in this country. Something must happen that will turn the direction that this country is going to. Mm. Because if, well, I mean, if we're going to go to the uh, polling booths right now, right now, there's nothing stopping Achiwaju, Bola, Ahmed, Chinobu coming to power. Nothing, mm. nothing. But between now, 
and next year february something has to happen i'm not talking about the fact that you know a movement a a, a realization coming upon young people both in all over the country you know in the north it must happen because they are the ones that are even suffering the most from what is happening mm. right now we're saying our young people here are not finding jobs but they are educated they are educated in the north they have no education they have no skill they have nothing they're just pawns in the hands of one uh, malam or one alaji who will come and gather all of them and use them mm. for his own. that's the the root of uh what do they call it uh, the boko haram violence and so on Insight on Splash 105.5 FM, your integrity station. I have DG Yesufu with me. And we're looking at the thought force, the imperative, and the possibility of uh, this movement. Talks about a political structure or shortage thereof, which the anti OB forces are drumming up. People have said that they are valid point to say that this political party or this movement has no structure. Mm -hmm. Is there a way? that we can make or, or be can be made attractive or that the labor movement this movement that is brewing now yes. can be made attractive to northerners to be made attractive to all the 70, 774 local government mm. across nigeria because it's fundamental yes the the constitution is clear on how a president can yes. emerge mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah um well, thankfully obi is from the east hopefully the people in the east will let go of this idea of ipob and for once think you know trust a son from their soil you know in the southwest if where the spirit of the answer staying really bad if we are really able to gather a following here we we'll begin to look at that as our foundation in the north that is where the real challenge is and that's where the votes are coming from we have been counting and hoping that the talks between um, the NNPP, I believe, uh, between Kwan Kwan So and Obi will yield some results. Uh, I hear that Kwan 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 So is saying that he prefers to be the presidential uh, okay. candidate while Obi is his vice. I, I don't know how far that discussion will go. But if Kwan Kwan So can team up with Obi, Kwan Kwan So can take care at least of Kano State and of Jigawa State. And if those two states are taken care of, then those two states can also form, form the foundation to enter into Kaduna State, Katsina, and into the Northwest and the Northeast. At least some, if we can get some 25% of the votes there. Do you see Kwakwonso subsuming his, his ambition under this movement? Well, that's where number one, they, they probably the place of prayer, you know, God still changes the hearts of people. Then number two, uh, political um, um, figures realizing that um, they can sacrifice their ambition for a greater good. You know, I don't see it as impossible. I hope he can. You know, one other thing that I'm really so uh, I'm passionate about this OB thing is the culture of waste in this country. I mean, there was a speech I listened to him and I saw how he explained how he curtailed waste in Anambra State. Uh, my, uh, look mr Shion, if we can reduce our waste in government mm. the reason why these people are going to the senate is because there's so much free money running all over the place all over the place if that culture can be curtailed then we'll have the right people going to the senate we have the right people going to political office we have the right people even in government offices because even in the civil service the reason why many of people are still operating there is because they have opportunity to be able to siphon i mean resources that are not properly accounted for hmm. you know and uh, obi has talked about the fact that he was able to do it in anambra he came into anambra the state was in debt he left the place with a lot of resources in the state's coffers you know so we're hoping that something can happen it's it looks impossible but I mean, if it if it doesn't work out in 2023, then there's still 2027, you know. And uh, one of the things that make political figures uh, sellable is when they bring figures behind them. You know, one of the reasons why they were considering Jonathan to even come back was because Jonathan consistently delivered 11 million mm. for his uh, political party. So, if, so, so Buhari? Yeah, yes, Buhari also the same thing. You know, so if Peter Obi is able to bring 5 million, 
if he's able to bring even if it is five million or six and we have some other person who has so, some four three million behind him they'll begin to consider coming together in 2027 and, but it has to start what will change this country has to start but again it could happen in the between this nine month period and it could happen probably in another four years but Ooh. it has to start it has to start yes, okay so how are the people going to help birth this new era yeah uh, because i see you've emphasized the issue of money politics so when you're looking at what is wrong with our system we talked about you know absence of leadership we talked about the idea of money being the lord and master of everything yes. you also talked about how people you know should get involved yes. tell me how would the people catch this bug yes. in such a way that they will be willing to run with it because they are the bulk of the people that will suffer Yes, you know, at the end. from misgovernance, yes. uh, the suffer from bad policies of government. How can the people liberate themselves? Yes, number one, uh, we have already started. Our radio stations and televisions are all considering Bible options beyond just the normal two. You know, we're grateful to God for that. The second one, of course, is that we have to uh, get our PVCs. We're grateful to God for the the INEC, the people who are at the helm of INEC are really working hard to make um, elections to be a level ground for everybody. I was at the INEC um, office um, in um, Agudi, just next to the Secretariat, and I saw a lot of people, young people, all of them trying to get their PVCs. I came very late and I was attended to, mm. you know, I was attended to the, at the INEC office. Yes, I, I came at 1 p.m. and the person told me, you, we cannot attend to you right now you know but you can come at so so time tomorrow would we'll attend to you and i really appreciated that so you could see some a working system and i believe that uh the number of uh people who will register for election uh for the coming year will greatly increase and probably even rival the numbers that come in the north so those are uh, the things the people have to get their pvcs and then we also have to really begin to talk to one another the political situation in the country is very important um i, I think also that our religious uh, organizations might need to key into this uh, situation somebody was telling me about sunday adelaja just mm -hmm. yesterday and he said that sunday adelaja because he led uh he led a church in ukraine with the largest congregation he was able to influence the orange revolution that brought about a change in the overall leadership of that country he was able to ensure that the puppet leader that was put into the in that country by russia was removed that is why when russia invaded ukraine sunday adelaja was one of their key people they were seeking to to get you know so i realized that it went, i mean we have religious leaders in this country that are leading millions you know if they truly consider the well-being of their people if they are not just taken from them if they really wish good for these people they will have to become partisan there's nowhere in the holy bible that says pastors cannot be partisan in fact what we see in scripture is that it was prophets that installed kings in the in the old testament those prophets that installed kings and in the new testament the church was very closely involved in the well-being of the people the whole idea of socialism was gotten from uh, acts chapter 2 acts chapter 3 Acts chapter 4 where we saw a first communal system where people brought all they had together and they ministered to the needs of everybody and everybody went home and i mean had everything in common that is where socialism was started from the new testament you know so the bible does not say pastors cannot be partisan in fact the bible insists that pastors must be partisan now uh although you had apologized but uh father Baca, mm. you know there is slight comment about ob Yes. Uh, because I'm going into the personality of Obi as a person now. Mm. Uh, and he referred to him as someone who is Tenji. Yes. That outlook of a politician being generous, what does that say to our politics? Yes, it's the same uh, issue of uh, money politics, you know. 
Uh, it is very unfortunate what Mbaka said. You see, every one of us have a measure of justice and righteousness within us. Every human being, including the worst of human beings, we, they all know what is right. You know, it is assumed that our religious leaders know that and emphasize that they are able to emphasize what is right, what is justice, what is um, what is fear for society. When Mbaka made that statement, he himself knew eventually that he had miscued. In fact, he offered an apology afterwards that what he said was wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, um, our religious leaders should be able to recognize what is fear because they are dealing with ordinary people. If religious leaders if they are doing what is right, if they are not just milking the flock, they know that out of their own pockets, they must have been sending one, two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand to some families. And they realize that if government is doing what it should be doing, it is the government of the country that should be doing that. Mm. So if they now champion the, I mean, a, a governmental system that will bring in uh, people who will serve the people, the religious leader will be able to keep his own money and use his resources for other things rather than being the one that will be sending 1k, 2k to families so that they can feed and come to church. You know, churches know, I mean, it's a common thing. People come to church and they go to the pastor and say they don't have transport money back home. You have to give them the transport money to go back home and also give them something for afternoon food. It's a constant thing in churches, you know. So, uh, religious leaders, um, it's, it's something they are uh, in back at him was a very unfortunate one, mm. and he himself knew that he made an error. And uh, thankfully, the uh, Roman Catholic Church has stepped into it to, yeah, to uh, distance himself from that statement. Uh, business back to it, Dead Woko stated that the presidential flag bearer of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, lacks the structure required to lead the country. One of the major criticisms against Peter Obi's emerges yes. is structure. Yes. Uh, have you considered that thought? Yes, yes. So hopefully we're, <laughs> we're building the structure. Uh, we're hoping it comes in in nine months. You know, we're working very, very hard. Uh, it's, it's, going, it's a, it's a long-term thing. Um, it's not an easy thing. Um, the people who we are quite critical about today already have structure and it's not structure that they built in nine months it's something that has been on ground for a long time yes you know from what level to local government level state level they already have people who are on ground people who themselves if they, they themselves come out to vote are able to deliver these uh people so we know that you know but at the same time it's something it's not there's nothing that's impossible um in the last election i have made mistakes um in the 2015 election i supported buhari to mm -hmm, power mm -hmm. you know and uh, he was quite popular then fortunately he didn't deliver in 2019 you know i i we, we didn't have anybody we we're going to vote for you know but we needed to vote somebody who could challenge buhari not on not on that person's credential alone but just the fact that he might be able to challenge Buhari. So we voted Atiku. Atiku, I mean, Atiku didn't win. But it was then I realized that persons like Wale Soinka were voting Kingsley Morgalu. Uh, there were others were voting, there were people who were voting Showare. Eventually, Morgalu had a 35,000, Showare had 33,000, but they still voted for these people. That was when it occurred to me that voting is a lot more than whether that person will win or not. I know that there will be a majority of people who don't want to waste, waste their vote. They will vote for who has the possibility of winning. But we must, and that's one of the other thing that I hope I can emphasize to your listeners, that we must get to the point where people vote beyond whether a person can win or not. We must be able to vote based on our conscience. We must be able to vote based on the credential of this person like i said if ob gets some five million from this election he has a solid credential to be able to go into the 2027 yes 2027 elections which i'm, I'm able to seek uh how i call it a coalition with some other political parties one of the things that i'm worried about when we talk about politics in nigeria particularly election period is the large number of unenlightened voters yes that we have yes. who are easily swayed by pecuniary needs yes, sir. Uh, do you think our voters are enlightened enough to think constructively 
the way you are thinking. No, they are not. Uh, that, and um, there, are two, there are two ways to it. First of all, we are having a mass of young people who are enlightened. Uh, these people are in the universities. Many of them have graduated. They don't have job. We have them. They are there. We are hoping and we're counting on them. The second one is a long-term thing. And that is the fact that uh, enlightenment is just basically education. You know, and this is again where we are calling for government to step in. You know, it was a pious Adesami that used to say that he believes that government intentionally deprive people of education because he knows that when a people are enlightened, they are going to remove the government from office. He, he told me that the government of Nigeria has weaponized poverty. Yeah, yes. Why am I passionate about Nigeria? The last school fees I paid in the university was 2000 plus. The government paid all my fees. Of course, it was when I finished that I realized that <laughs> the tertiary education in other countries was not free. I mean, they paid everything. And I spent some six years in the university because I had an extra year. They paid everything, you know. And I came out an enlightened individual. For so two, three years, I didn't have a job. I didn't have a job that was anything anybody could speak about. Mm. But I had something upstairs. In fact, for about a year, I spent all my time in the house just with my computer reading and uh, studying and just doing things by myself until I took up a job in a primary school, you know. So, I mean, the, the best thing is just to have an enlightened people. A government that is committing, committing resources to education is a government that is going to change the future of that country because eventually you have a mass of people who are enlightened and who can make decisions right, especially when they come to the electoral. So, it is, first of all, the immediate, we have young people who we, we have a mass of them. We're counting on them. And then we have uh, a long term thing where we must get the people educated and vote right. Do, do these people give you hope? The these young people? Yes, 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 yes. The answer, ah, <laughs> Mr. Shum, you must. Uh, I saw the answers thing. It was because I was uh, at work, I couldn't join. I saw it too. <laughs> I saw it. it I was. joined too. <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy, and the, the shooting at uh, how do I call it at Lekki is still something I mourn. I mourn every year. I've written on that Lekki shooting, I probably mourn three or four times. You know, it's is the is the worst thing that has happened in our country's history. It's the worst, and uh, I hope that uh, the <laughs> individuals or who, whoever is alleged to be behind it eventually will come out as we go towards the election so that it can speak against them. You know, it was an evil thing. It's an evil thing. Um, but our young people are there and. We're counting on them. I'm closing now. Yes, sir. Do you believe Peter Obi will win this election? Ah, as at present, no. <laughs> in another nine months, hopefully, yes. <laughs> I'll ask you again All in right. another nine months yes, before sir. the election. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, if you do not have Obi on the ballot, who would you have gone for? Ah. I know your candidate, uh, Oshibadu, did not win. Yes, the yes, the, yes, yes. So, uh, Oshibadu didn't come in. So um, if uh, Peter Obi is not on the ballot, but we'll have to settle him for uh, Bola Ahmed Chinobu. He still has the credentials. He's still uh, somebody who, uh, who has a history behind him, uh, except for his health, which is the reason why I'm not supporting him, his health. You know, he's still somebody who the uh, Nigerians can count. We don't have a fact about his health. Yes, we don't. It's just that we see things. <laughs> we're we medical doctors. <laughs> we see things. Well, that, on that's social a man media. who, uh, in January, he declared his intention to run for presidency. Yes. He approached Mr. President, and from that night, when we saw him, you know, on television, yes. Tinubu has been moving around this country. Yes, we since January till we, now. We, we, we must commend him for that. And uh, it has been one of the testimonies that his supporters have used against us, the Peter OB people. <laughs> you know, when we look at it, um, uh, we have had six presidents. We had a sick Yaradwa. He was a good man. His government was excellent, but because of his health, he couldn't deliver. We've had a Buhari also. You know, we can't have another sick president. That's <laughs> my argument. <laughs> Deji Yesufu, thank you for speaking with us. Thank Project you very much, Mr. Shio. And I wish you the best in your optimism about Nigeria. Amen. Thanks. I'm equally optimistic about Nigeria. And that's why I say all the time, may Nigeria survive. Amen. Good evening. <laughs>